today we need an education that is about human development, about all the great things that humans do because knowledge is not enough. It's about looking at children and saying, with what we've got, let's create something that's going to help them flourish. Let's create something that's going to help them live well with each other and let's allow them to interact freely, independently with the world around so that they become attached to it, so they become curious about it, so that they know that they can take agency, they have an effect on it. And so we see that really this approach is fundamentally about creating children for a life of caring about where they live, caring about their environment, caring about other people, but also developing themselves and their talents and their capacities. And that's certainly what this world needs. And the Montessori approach does this not by imposing, but by having the children live it every single day with the adults that are with them and in what we call a prepared environment. Help me to do it myself. That's the key. So we really like to use the word guide. That is what we are. So first of all, you have to have love for the children. And second of all, you have to have knowledge and skills. And how does it change? It adapts to, it, to the uh, developmental needs of the children. When they're six years and older, then the uh, lunches are being prepared by the children themselves. And they are being supported by a cook. It's not just learning to work together to make food, it's learning where uh, food comes from, uh, what's healthy food, and then of course the whole social thing around food, preparing food for children, for your colleagues, so important to experience what that is, and to sit at the table and to enjoy food together. At the toddlers you will see that the guides are much closer to the children. They will really take their hand and, uh, and do things for them. But they are also the ones who prepare the prepared environment so that the child has success. So everything is on their height. So the children's house, the children are more aware. So the guides will be the ones who model a lot in their behavior, so they will show with analyzed movement how things should be done. And then they will go away and give the children the space. Then we go into a different phase, the six to 12. Help me to think for myself. Yeah, there the adult's role definitely changes a lot. First of all, the adult becomes the mentor. The mentor who speaks individually with the children, so all our children have their individual mentors. They start thinking of what do I want to learn. And then, if you know what you want to learn, what do you really need for that? Do you need a lesson? Do you need support? What kind of support? Talking about that, making a child aware that you may ask for what you need. But the adult also is the uh, inspirator. We have group lessons of five, six children. We're sitting here today in a school that has done exactly what it needed to do in this country and any child from the neighbourhood can come for free and that's the goal really now um, to spread more of that in the world. Uh, the idea that Montessori education is elitist, we see that the work in refugee camps and the work in, in very uh, underserved communities, Montessori is appearing in all of those different um, environments and different places. Well, I think the Montessori approach is relevant today because we look around us and we see that we have serious concerns about our climate and our, the effects of our life on our natural world. We see that prejudice still exists, that people can still be judged for their belief systems or for the colour of their skin. Now, Montessori education believes that that is actually not the normal state of humans. Our general inclination is to live well with others. Our general inclination is to take care of the things that we use and the place in which we live and to love it. We have a very strong capacity to reach out and connect with others.